people who made sudden fortunes. Next, Joan Rivers. This is Channel 2 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it happened 11 days behind schedule, but for about a million New York City school children, the school year has now begun. And it is a very unusual Monday morning indeed. We have reporters across New York City as the school year, delayed by the fear of asbestos, finally gets underway. Many students did not go to their regular schools today. Buses took them elsewhere. And the school bell did not ring in every part of town. Thousands of children stayed home because their districts are still closed. We begin our coverage with Channel 2's John Slattery. He's at the Board of Education in Brooklyn. John. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, on any day in New York City, you'll find March. And marching on the Board of Education here are parents from District 23, District 17, District 13, District 19, parents who are concerned. They're not at all happy about the way they've been treated throughout this entire ordeal and believe they still aren't getting uh, the straight information on asbestos at this time. However, city officials have also visited a number of schools. They say they're quite gratified with what they see today. They call it remarkable organization. It was Mayor Dinkins who six weeks ago ordered the school asbestos reinspection and cleanup, and today he was out touring schools, even though two districts in the city decided to go against the wishes of the central board and stay closed on their own. City Hall's attitude toward parents in those districts the mayor sounds conciliatory. Uh, as a parent and a grandparent, I certainly can understand the fear and concern when, when, when no one is quite sure what the nature of the problem is or, or uh, what its effect would be on children 10, 20 years from now, so it's understandable. Parents in Bronx District 12 decided to stay closed until they're assured the schools are clean. They'll reopen tomorrow. District 19 in Brooklyn is also closed. Both Chancellor Ramon Cortinez and the mayor today made separate visits to PS1 in Chinatown, where last year a faulty report on asbestos exploded into a citywide scandal. Today, the mayor spoke to students and inspected a few classrooms in this once decrepit building. Today, fresh paint, no cracks in the walls. One of the mayor's recent appointments to the school board, Victor Gottbaum, was impressed. It's just beautiful, considering that this was the initiator, you think there'd be, you know, excitement. It's just wonderful. PS1 is in District 2, a district that today had only one of its 30 schools closed. That's PS42. Even there, say officials, the transfer of students was orderly. Most kids were brought by, brought by the parents, and I must tell you that 95% of the children showed up. District 2 superintendent is former school's chancellor, Anthony Alvarado, who left office a few years ago over improper loans. We caught up with teachers' union president, Sandra Feldman, after she'd toured two schools. Both of the schools I visited uh, had some rooms closed off, some spaces closed off, but were very upbeat. The schools had been marvelously cleaned by the custodians. The teachers and the parents and the kids were very happy to be back. Certainly a controversial start to a delayed school year. There are scores of school buildings that are still closed, and some, we are told, may stay closed for weeks. This is John Slattery reporting live from downtown Brooklyn. Carol, Michelle. Okay, John, thanks. And following up on what John said, as we mentioned earlier, there are thousands of New York City school kids with no school today because their school districts decided not to open. We get that part of the story now from Channel 2's Lisa Castleman at District 12 headquarters in the Bronx. How's it looking, Lisa? Well, pretty confusing around here, Carol. And as John mentioned, two school districts voted to close their doors, District 12 here in the Bronx and District 19 in Brooklyn. The 19 vote came down about 7.30 last night and word got out. But here in the Bronx, the vote didn't come down until about 11.15, and as expected, many people with parents and kids showed up here at PS66 and other schools this morning. They gave the decision mixed reviews, but most of them were disappointed when they were turned away at the door. I'm a parent. They won't let me in, but they're letting other people in. I don't understand what's going on. There's not too much safety in the street for the children, so I think it's time for them to go back to school. My daughter's not coming to the school until I know that it's free of asbestos. It's not not to do once she is, you know, in the same room with it. It's not not to do about it. So why should I send my daughter to school and they, and they have no type of um, assurance for the parents? They are talking about asbestos, but they ain't doing really nothing. 
And this was the scene in Brooklyn last night when members of District Board 19 voted to close all of its schools after reviewing the latest documents about asbestos cleanup. Was it difficult? Yes, very difficult because we're talking about 24,000 youngsters, but the key question here is safety. They have not been deemed safe by any organization, EPA or any other organization. The books that they showed us today showed there were no test results have found anything safe. You wanted to see it in writing? We want to see it in writing. Many kids, though, seemed disappointed. They, they set a bad example for the kids. They want to show, they showing us to do things wrong and all complicated. They ain't doing things on time and right. Now they're having meetings in District Board 19 in Brooklyn and here in 12 uh, today to figure out what's going on to decide if they'll open their doors tomorrow. By the way, as for District Board 12, a source told me they had cleared all but two schools here, but they decided to close all of them anyway. Why? That's still a confusing question. Reporting live in the Bronx, I'm Lisa Castleman. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Lisa. It's been quite a day, and our coverage continues now with two portraits of how the school day began on this very atypical Monday, beginning with Channel 2's Vic Miles at PS42 in Lower Manhattan. Vic? What a school morning it was for PS42 in Chinatown. 925 kids and their mothers and teachers all wanting somewhere to go. And they had somewhere to go only a few blocks away. The problem was to get there. But organizational work by parents and teachers all day yesterday paid off. Educational executives were on hand to help. And they were all here at 7 o'clock in the morning. You see signs, parents are involved, buses are here for shuttle. The idea was to ferry all of the kids, class intact, teacher and all, to the Chinese Community Center on Mott Street. It was a matter of organizing classes in the street. The intersection of Hester and Orchard was a tangle of kids, teachers, and school buses supplied by the Board of Education. For a time, some parents worried. I thought to take them uh, with me to work. I don't know what is going to happen on the other side of Chinatown. Chinatown is so bad as it is. We're going to count everybody up, and then we're going to go off to the, the next school. The buses got loaded. Not all of the kids were happy about the move, but the plan is to have classes at the community center, lunch and all, and later get bussed back to PS42 to go home from there. The whole plan to be repeated for every day, PS42 remains closed. In Chinatown, Vic Miles, Channel 2 News. I'm Cindy Shu at PS31 in Brooklyn, where the school is closed and the kids are getting bused elsewhere. Parents started out this chaotic morning with a demonstration. We want our kids back in this school as soon as possible. It's a good school and all the parents got to stick together. Otherwise, if you don't stick together, we might lose everything. Many of the parents did not find out until Friday that their school would be closed. And they say they've been kept in the dark about everything. Jeffrey Salta had no idea the kids would be bused to other schools, so he left his son at home. I was bringing my wife to work, and I seen the news van, and I figured I'd come down and see what was going on, and that's when I found out that they're busing the children over to another school. If Salta hadn't seen the demonstration on his way to work, he'd have left his son at home again tomorrow. The buses will be here at 8.30 every morning to take the kids to three area schools, the farthest being 20 blocks away. But for some parents, that's just too far. Claudia Wood is not putting her sons on the buses. She says she wants to send them somewhere else. Because it's so far, you know, so I'm better like the school where they belong before, where I was living before, because this is closed. They don't say where they want to open or nothing. So I better go to another school. The principal, Patricia Sinan, is hoping her school will be ready to open in 10 days, and the kids we talked to can't wait. I'm in sixth grade, and I'm graduating this year, and I'd like to be in my school. In Brooklyn, I'm Cindy Shu, Channel 2 News. All right, now here now is the latest list of school closings that have been issued by the Central School Board. You can listen for the number that you're interested in. In Manhattan, PS 42, 61, 98, 109, 128, 192, and IS 164 and 223. Also, junior high school number 22. In the Bronx, District 12, also PS 4, 64, 106, 109 and IS 125. Out in Brooklyn, District 19 still closed. Also PS 27, 31, 104, 107, 150, 156, 176, 192, 197, 222, 251, IS 62 and the 240 Annex. Out in Queens, PS 24, 79, 82, 85, 101, 
111, 140, 164, and 165, 172, 196, and 200. And junior high schools, 168, 189, and 198. Finally, on Staten Island, PS 22, IS 51, and Concord High School. A lot of schools still closed. How to know yeah. when they're going to open? Well, we have some information. That's right. The next two weeks could be pretty crazy. And if you mm -hmm. have any questions concerning the asbestos crisis, here are some numbers that should help you. The Parents Asbestos Hotline is 718 472 1705. That's 718 472 1705. And the School Bus Hotline is 718 392 8855. Now, we should tell you that a lot of people have been calling these numbers, so it may take a few calls to get through. Pretty tough time, Randa. Mm -hmm. uh, while the asbestos crisis may be making big news, of course, many students and parents say that their fear of violence in the classroom is far greater than their fear of asbestos. Channel 2's Marsha Kramer is live for us now in Manhattan's Lower East Side, where a student at Seward Park High School was stabbed only two hours ago on this first day. Marsha. Well, Carol, that's right. Although asbestos might have been the overwhelming concern of parents coming to taking their kids to school on the first day, the threat of violence wasn't far behind. Here at Seward Park High School on the Lower East Side, an 18-year-old former student was stabbed in the neck this morning. Board of Ed member Luis Reyes told me that the stabbed student and his attacker had a history of disagreements and that one had obtained an order of protection to keep the other, from, uh, keep the other away from him. Police took one student into custody, but it's not clear right now whether he was actually involved. He reportedly told police it was not him, but his brother who pulled the knife. The incident left the school in turmoil. It's my fault because it's saying that we ain't really got security around here, but it's life and it's like you got to watch your back everywhere you go now. Well, the student was stabbed in the neck, and right now he's undergoing surgery at Bellevue Hospital, where he's reported to be in serious condition. School officials say this was the first outbreak of violence for the first day of the first school year. Reporting live from the Lower East Side, I'm Marcia Kramer, and now back to the studio. Thank you, Marcia. And when we come back from a break this Monday afternoon, September 20th, Israel says John Demyanyuk is free to leave. We'll update you on the travel plans for the man once accused of being Ivan the Terrible. And also an update today on newspaper columnist Ma Mike McAlary's condition. He was injured in a car crash this weekend. It's Oodles, the adult game we're answering the Oodles. Is Oodles the fun? Yeah, like an insect's hairdo starting with B? Mm, beehive. Or what about stupid weights with a D? Uh, Dumbbell. It's Oodles. Look, one player is the MC and asks hilarious riddle-like questions, and your team has to solve them. Italian window treatment with a V. Venetian blinds. So what's the answer to fun? Starting with O? Oodles. The adult game we're answering the Oodles. It's Oodles of fun. I had heard about the treatment, but I was scared and kind of embarrassed. The pain was unbearable. Before I knew it, it totally ruined my life. I was so uncomfortable, I couldn't do anything. I can't believe I waited so long. I was home the same day. Don't suffer one more day. Call 1-800-MD-LASER to help put an end to pain from hemorrhoids or hernias. Say hello to us and help say goodbye to pain. They call her the Hollywood Madam, Miss Heidi Fleiss. And while she's been awaiting trial, Hard Copies dug up some of her home movies, where Heidi is quite the comedian. <laughs> You've never seen her like this before. It's Heidi's Home Movies. And not only did Roseanne buy a diner and a newspaper, but now she has her own advice column. Move over, dear Abby. It's Dear Rosie on Hard Copy. Tonight at 7 on Channel 2. With two kids, it was hard to cover all the bills, even with me working. So we'd pay what we had to and then keep the phone off the hook. But when my husband's business went under, we had no other choice. I knew that we needed an experienced bankruptcy lawyer because we just couldn't afford to make any mistakes. So I called Jacoby and Myers. For a free bankruptcy consultation, call 1-800-97-LEGAL. Jacoby and Myers. Would you like to refinance your first mortgage, or pay off a high-rate second mortgage, or maybe purchase a new home, but you've been late with payments from time to time? Don't worry. Call 1-800-DIAL-CASH. Statewide Capital has the money you need, and we intend to lend homeowners over $250 million this year. Even homeowners who've been turned down elsewhere can take advantage of today's low rates by calling 1-800-DIAL-CASH. 
For a better tomorrow, dial cash today. In Israel this noon, John Demyanyuk is free to go home after seven years behind bars. The retired auto worker was acquitted two months ago of being Nazi prison guard Ivan the Terrible. The Israeli Supreme Court has finally decided now to close this case and not retry him for other alleged war crimes. Demyanyuk's son-in-law and a U.S. representative are now on their way to Israel to escort him back to the United States. And the newly signed accord between Israel and the PLO received support today from the 21-member Arab League. At a meeting in Cairo, the chief of the foreign ministers said that only Iraq opposed this collective statement. But delegates are stressing that peace in that region can only be achieved through Israel's withdrawal from all occupied Arab territories. Michelle. President Clinton has started a very busy week promoting sweeping changes for the nation's health care system. The president pitched his overhaul to doctors at a White House meeting this morning. Promises included malpractice reform, less paperwork, and no reductions in pay. The president's entire plan guaranteeing health coverage to all Americans will be unveiled Wednesday night. Newspaper columnist Mike McAlary remains in critical condition this noon after a serious car accident this weekend. McAlary was alone when he lost control of his Volvo on the FDR drive early Saturday morning. Look at this car. Doctors say the 35-year-old rider suffered injuries to his chest, abdomen, and head and has now undergone several hours of surgery. McAlary has worked for all three New York tabloids. When we continue after a break, an update on the medical conditions of two soap opera stars, Clint Ritchie and Leonard Stab. But first up, we have the winners of last night's Primetime Emmy Awards. Aren't my sisters fabulous? They're really such funsy people. Whose house am I in? Good news. Nick Pym is coming to dinner. Nick Pym is a philanderer and a Nazi. My second husband is on his fifth wife. My first I've lost track of, and personally, I doubt there will be a third. So you've closed shop. I miss men. I do, too. Mother, you slept with that furrier last night. A good man is hard to find. We are the sisters Rosenzweig. Who knows? Tonight could be funsy. On the next entertainment tonight, Tim Allen, Candace Bergen, Jerry Seinfeld, and many more. E.T. shows you the 45th Annual Emmy Awards as you've never seen them. Get a special look behind the scenes and find out what really happens at TV's biggest event of the year. Plus, in Age of Innocence, Michelle Pfeiffer's an independent woman who goes after what she wants. In real life, she's doing the same. I wanted to be a mother. Now. Get to know Michelle Pfeiffer, the single mom, on the next E.T. Tonight at 7.30 on Channel 2. Revlon creates color style, cosmetics exclusively formulated for women of color. Yo, come on, move this. Shake that body. Shake that body. Health Watch is sponsored by Stouffer's Lunch Express. Crave the taste. Oh! Crave the good times. Hear the crunch. That crunch is calling you. Stouffer's French bread. Pizza. Now Stouffer's has two new ways to satisfy your craving. New white pizza with cheeses, garlic, and herbs. And new garden vegetables loaded with peppers, onions, and mushrooms. Stouffer's turns bread, pizza, nothing comes closer to home. It looks like the networks are taking second seat now to cable television. At last night's 45th Annual Emmy Awards, HBO came out on top, raking in 17 Emmys. NBC came in second with 16. And as for CBS, the series Picket Fences took home top honors for Best Drama. And co-stars Tom Skerritt and Kathy Baker each won as lead actor and actress in a drama. Meantime, in the world of comedy, Seinfeld got the loudest laugh, Best Emmy, or Emmy um. for Best Comedy. God. Well, moving now from prime time to daytime, Meredith Berlin joins us this Monday with the latest from Soap Opera Digest. What's up, Meredith? Okay, good news for Guiding Light fans. They have sagged yet another soap opera queen. Marcy Walker, best known for her work as superheroine Eden Castillo on Santa Barbara, will join the show October 29th. She's going to play a character, I love this name, 
tangy <laughs> as in tangerine uh, a romantic <laughs> it's a great great soap opera name a romantic interest for josh he met her on the french riviera and is supposedly enthralled with her nick coster who starred on just about every soap opera there is is coming to as the world turns in early november as international adventurer eduardo grimaldi expect him to become romantically involved with some of the show's wealthier unattached women interestingly this is his second stint on the show in the six in 1966 he played dr El john eldridge on the show married to Lisa. Okay, two hot male stars are joining Bold and Beautiful, Ian Buchanan and Michael Sabatino. Buchanan played Duke on General Hospital. He's going to be playing a psychiatrist, Dr. James Orwick, beginning September 30th. And Sabatino, who recently was fired as Lawrence on Days of Our Lives, will be involved with Macy, his first air date, October 18th. Finally, Clint Ritchie, who was seriously injured this past May on his ranch in California, is back at work on One Life to Live. He'll begin airing September 30th. Good news. And Leonard Staub, is still in critical but stable condition at Westchester uh, Medical Center. He has been moved, however, out of the ICU into a private room. Good. He's on the mend. Hope so. Hope Thank so. you very Thank much, you. Mayor. Well, still to come, Stormfield with the autumn forecast. And then good news about a wayward whale recovering at the New York Aquarium. Quality time for us is reading wonderful stories together. For the experience of a lifetime, make time to read with your children. The feeling of lycra is the feeling of freedom. Let yourself go. Live in Lycra. I'm Roseanne Coletti with a reminder. The Troubleshooter Hotline is open weekdays from 11 a.m. till 1. So if you've got trouble, call our volunteers from the National Council of Jewish Women at 212-582-0220. And don't miss my Troubleshooter reports weekdays at 5 on Channel 2 News. If someone told you you could save a child's life, wouldn't you reach out? The children of war-torn Bosnia need your help. I'm Tony Randall. Please join me on September 29th at Carnegie Hall when Symphony for United Nations will present Marvin Hamlish's first symphony to benefit the refugee children of Bosnia. You can make a difference by supporting this concert. Please call 212-247-7800 or write for more information. Help us use the gift of music to save the children. Rock Bottom rewards great dental care. Buy the germ-fighting mouthwash, Listerine, or Cool Mint Listerine antiseptic. Listerine kills germs that cause bad breath, plaque, and the gum infection gingivitis. Or buy antibacterial Effordent with Arm & Hammer baking soda to clean and deodorize your dentures. Because right now, when you buy Effordent, Listerine, or Cool Mint Listerine at Rock Bottom, you can save $2 on Arm & Hammer dental care. So reward yourself with great savings at Rock Bottom. Doctors told her she'd never get pregnant, but then she met him. It's a miracle child in my eyes. So why'd he leave her? Next, Jane Whitney. Tomorrow morning at 9. Updating our top stories this Monday noon. The first day of school met chaos and confusion for many of the city's one million school children. Almost 100 buildings are still closed because of the asbestos scare, but getting information out, including locations of temporary classrooms, proved very tough this morning. And on Manhattan's Lower East Side, the first day of school met violence. A 17-year-old student was stabbed at Seward Park High School down on Grand Street. He is in serious condition at Bellevue Hospital now with a stab wound to the neck. Police took a former student into custody. All right, we have some good news to report on the weather front. This is my fi favorite kind oh, of weather. Isn't it yours? It is. Classic fabulous autumn. out there. Yeah. What are we, let's just leave. Let's just get out right now. <laughs> Bye, everybody. We're leaving. <laughs> it is gorgeous out there. Temperature outside right now is 58 degrees. That's here in the city. Uh, last night, we tied our old record low for this date. That was 44 degrees. It has been hit a couple of times since it was first hit back in the early 1800s. Uh, what we've got is humidity, low at 37%. What you have is a large dome of cool weather, high pressure sitting over us right now. This dome is going to slowly slide out into the Atlantic. As it does, low pressure system and clouds associated with this that are now already infiltrating to Pennsylvania will be making their way in late tonight and then slowly thickening and lowering. As a result, tomorrow is going to be a rather cloudy and cool day. 
and we can expect also some off and on showers. Then we've got a little nice weather back behind it. Now, here's what's going on. High pressure over us now. Watch the clouds coming in from the west. And you can see and clearly understand that we're going to be getting more in the way of clouds for Tuesday. The good news is Wednesday clears up. The bad news is another front comes right on the heels of that on Thursday. So the weather is going to be changing very quickly, although more good news, we will be warming up a little bit. Today, the high is only going to get to 66 degrees. That's almost 10 degrees below normal for this time of year. The sun will slowly begin to fade out, and we'll get more clouds as the day goes along. No wetness. Leave your umbrellas home tonight. But tomorrow, you're going to want to have it with you. Possibility by early morning that you might be seeing some showers around. And as I said, it is going to be rather cool for this time of year, but slowly warming up as we go through the week. And the best news of all is by the end of this week, we should be seeing a lot of sunshine and nice temperatures for the weekend. That'll be different than this past one. Right. right. Oh, Thanks, yeah. Tom. Very nice. Finally, this noon. Do you remember that wayward whale stuck in the waters off the Bronx? Well, we've got a good prognosis for you. Scientists at the New York Aquarium in Coney Island say that the female pilot whale has made a miraculous recovery. They say the whale had suffered from a slight case of pneumonia, but she's doing so well now she should be back in open waters by Thanksgiving. How about that? Swim on, girl. Yeah, That's all right. Up. That's Channel 2 News at noon this Monday. I'm Carol Martin. I'm Michelle Marsh. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your afternoon.